Well, good morning, everybody. This is Michael DeVille coming to you from beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Charles Nenner is with me today with a special interview. He's got some special charts. And here is Charles. We're going to discuss a couple of old charts, some new charts, and we've got a lot more information coming right now. Charles, how are you? Thank you so very much for coming on with us today. Yeah, because, you know, it's interesting because we could be in a very dangerous week now. Uh, nothing always happens, but a very good chance is that the market is going to be in trouble. So that's, I thought, I sent you some interesting charts to show that markets usually behave in the same way. And why do they behave in the same way? Usually because the psychology of the investors is the same. The facts are not the same, but the interpretation is the same. So here is something I sent out uh, before the crash of 1987. I'm in the business a long time. And what you see here is that on the bottom, you see the crash of 1929. And on top, you see the, the crash of 1987. And what you see that for a long time, they went totally parallel. It went ex was exactly the same. So then I sent out to all my clients uh, that we're right at the top. And if we continue to follow uh, the 1929 situation, we're going to have a 1987 crash. Uh, this often happens. I have a lot of examples. Uh, so that's why right now I'm watching the market because as you probably can show on the next, the next one, um, it looks again. Uh, we still have a discussion if this is 1929 or it's 2008. In any way, it's, it's not important because what you see is uh, the blue one is the past or 2008 or 1929, because they look the same. So it could be a mix up. And the other one, which is not updated, is uh, is right now 2022. So what you see is where the, I think it's the green line stops. There, there was a bounce coming, which I didn't update yet. But so it's not surprising that we had a bounce for the last, what was it, two weeks or so, because that's yes. also in the chart. Now, now it goes straight down. And if the whole thing continues to go parallel, then starting the 21st is going to be a very dangerous week. If we get through the week, we're probably okay. But the chances are, if this continues, that we have a big move down. So that's, that's like in a couple of days here. So today's the 19th of October. You're talking about right. October 21st. Right. Is, is showing up on your charts as... Um, Looks yeah, like a waterfall the, event. Looks like it's going to crash or it's going to really decline. This is when everybody's selling all their assets. Everything gets sold. Is that correct? Well, this is, I, I don't know what happens in the, in these cases, but, uh, you know, uh, I get a lot of uh, questions. Is it time to buy, to buy? And then I say, listen, everybody's still afraid to, to, to lose the upside, but nobody's afraid that they're going to lose more downside. So since there is still danger over here and uh, you, you see my research, so we have in red, Ink every time is don't buy the market, don't buy the market. Same thing with gold and silver, don't buy the market because people are so used to buy the dips, but they get killed right now. And we're now in a very dangerous period, uh, let's say within a week. It doesn't have to happen, but if you look at this overlay, it all also looks pretty good. So we have to be very careful over here. So we've been talking about the fact that there's going to be an opportunity to put some money to work. Well, you've been talking about there's going to be lots and lots of volatility. So this is kind of like what you've been waiting for. Would, would you say that? Well, not waiting for. I mean, I just think uh, everybody is out of the market already uh, for a long time. And uh, we, we have a, in, in, in the October, November period, as you know, we have a, a tradable low could be late November. But that's not the only thing I do with my cycles. I have to take into consideration these overlays. And this is still too dangerous to, uh, to buy stocks. Well, this is a pretty amazing overlay, uh, Charles. It's it's a it's a pretty scary uh, yes. start. So, what can we do to so as as an investor like myself, we need to talk to uh, either uh, pull ourselves and and take a look at our exposure to the market, or talk to our financial advisors and find out what kind of exposure we have. But is there a way we can make any money on this if we're looking for just a few days? Can we start going short or take some puts or some? Well, what, what, you, what you can do is you can very cheaply. Now it's already a little bit more expensive, like a couple of days ago. Uh, 
clients of mine bought the uh, S&P 3200 and 3100 puts uh, expiration the end of the first week of November. They were very cheap uh, because if it goes down a little bit, that doesn't help us. But if we really have this big move down, as you see here coming, then we could definitely go down 15% and then the volatility will explode and then you make a lot of money on these puts. And they were very cheap. Today, I don't know if they're still very cheap, but I think they're still very cheap. Um, so mm -hmm. if, you, if you think it's going to happen, then the only thing you can do is buy very far out of the money cheap puts. Uh, that is just like an insurance. If it doesn't happen, you lose a little bit, but if it happens, you, you're doing great. So that's that's one way. The other way is, like I always do, is buy the volatility. And you buy, can buy calls on the volatility index. That's actually the same as buying puts on the S&P. Uh, but there's always, there are always chances. Like, you know, with the gold, maybe you remember we had a big downside target of uh, 1646. I says if it breaks, we go 1600. If that breaks, we can even go to 1500. So there are always major opportunities. Uh, the bonds, I, I might remind you, we were already short, I know, for two years from the top. So I, I don't like usually I don't like people to take one opportunity. Uh, you have to put a little bit in every opportunity our research shows, and then you do very well. Well, yes, thank you very much, and you've been you've been kind enough to tell people to take your free trial because yes. uh, you sent it to me, and it's just chock full of information. You have been telling for the last four, five, six, seven weeks, eight weeks, actually, I think for a long time that uh, to stay out of the market, that this is not a market for you to be to be in it. There's a lot of, lot of risk. So, um, well, yeah, okay. The, the, pro the problem, my problem is uh, that I have always to fight against media that say the opposite. You have to understand that, uh, that uh, the media will only invest uh, uh, people who, who are positive. Because if the media take on people that say, we're going to crash, we're going to go down, nobody watches anymore. So I always have to go against the news and that is so-called pundits, what they say, and not even talking about the White House and Biden who just talk all this nonsense. And people are very much influenced what they hear. And then I'm in the lone voice that says the opposite. And, you know, it's very difficult for people to decide, you know, where the real uh, interest lies. Well, the unfortunate thing is that oftentimes people who are just the average Main Street investors, they're the last one to know that there's a problem, aren't they? Right, 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 right. So, so because they listen to people who have no clue what's going on. Yes, well, they're very positive on on the on the on the major news and the meet. What do they call that mainstream media? Let's go to that next chart that you have. I think that's uh, you sent that out as a, as the Dow. Uh, uh, well, no, I put the Fed funds in right. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 important. that's important. That's important because, like I wrote in a couple of updates, we don't have to go from number to number. And to listen to the statements of the of the uh, of the Fed, as you see here, the cycle on the bottom, the red one, is predicting all the highs and lows in the in the Fed funds. So here you see where the cursor is, and you can read it on the left top. It says May 25. So for the moment, Fed funds will go up, and that's one of the reasons that we're going to look because I sent you some charts of real estate because if these uh, mortgages go at least to 10%, maybe 12%, it's going to be a problem for the housing market to stay put. It's going to not going to look good. I know we, we've talked about that. We're going to, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I've added a, a chart I got from Bloomberg this morning as well. And it just confirms what you're saying. Um, you know, you and I talked about the, the bonds. Uh, we've been talking about it for, for two years. I, I saw in the news that the uh, British guilts and the, uh, pension funds that hold them, that in the last six, eight, nine months, they've lost 70% of their of their value because of the rising interest rates? Well, I tell you what, I, I'm Dutch, as you know, and the Dutch have the, the biggest pension funds in the world. But politics said that you have to be 60, 70 pence percent in bonds, in this case, in German bonds. And they gave ne negative return. And I had many discussions. I said, first of all, why would you put billions and billions in, 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 in minus, minus return, minus a half percent, even more? And don't you understand, once these things are going down, you lose a lot of capital. Uh, we have leaders in the world, in all kinds of countries, that have no idea about anything, especially not about eco economics. 
And yeah. also, you know, all the pension funds are going to be in big trouble, which means is that the buying power of the individual is going to collapse, uh, which gets you in a, in a huge recession or, or worse. You know, I'm very pessimistic. I, I know you. And, and it's not even just the, uh, the, the individuals. A lot of people, you're my age, are counting on the pension funds to, to, as our uh, you know, retirement and, and to That's lose 70% in a, in a pension fund. How does the pension fund then uh, perform what it's supposed to do? That, that means all their plans have just gone, gone literally to nothing. It's, it's just, it's really, really sad. Yeah, I had some clients that are only long funds. They cannot even go short. No. Yeah. And, and they have to be in these negative government bonds. And now right. the interest rates are 4, 5, 6, 7%. They've just de decimated yeah. these bond funds. You and I talked about that two years ago. And uh, you know, we, I got out, my clients got out, and yet um, these pension funds are, are as you say, uh, the government tells them they have to buy them. So it, it's, it's pretty tough. So this chart that we have, if we can get the chart back up, um, talks about the fact that uh, we still think that they're going to be raising interest rates. So we've got uh, a couple of, we got a couple of Fed rate, uh, Fed meetings coming up here in the next uh, uh, few weeks. So this looks like the Fed is going to continue to raise uh, interest rates. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that that's what I'm looking at here? Definitely. The cycle shows you that the Fed funds go up for a couple of years. Uh, the Fed funds uh, rate, uh, is this the Fed funds rate? Yes. So the rate goes up uh, when the Fed funds go down for the next couple of years. So we don't have to look what the economy does because we know that already. On top of that, we know what the commodity uh, index does. So there is a kind of a lull over here, which we discussed. But next year is going to shoot up again inflation. Uh, and like we discussed before, I don't understand the Fed. They have to look from number to number. They don't have any systems like I have. Obviously not. Yeah, we, we can see that we can see the commodities coming uh, down, and, and I'm sure that's because of the demand destruction that's going on. Uh, as things are, we can see that this things are really the economy around the world is is weakening pretty rapidly. Uh, let's go to the next slide here, and let's just talk about that one. This is this is the one that you're talking about. This is going to coincide exactly with what you're talking about. You've been sending this out, and I'm assuming that this waterfall here is just coming up here in the next couple of days. Is that what we're talking about? Well, it says actually, uh, the, the, you see very nicely, uh, the red cycle usually shows the tops and the bottoms and it showed the, showed the top, uh, that's why we're in zero cash. And it shows that uh, the cycle still points down into December. Now, so, the question, the que so there are a couple of confirmations. It doesn't have to be this waterfall situation, but at least it's too early to go long. If, if this crash doesn't happen because the overlay doesn't continue, forever, then at least, you know, it's too, too risky to buy. So we've been talking about there are going to be some opportunities. So one would think that this is probably once we get the signal that this is going to be a fairly good buying opportunity uh, after December 30th. I, I imagine just going into the first quarter of 2023. Right. And that's the bounce we've been talking about, right? This is this. We're still going to be in a bear market, but this is just a, a bounce that we're going to get a yeah. chance to get the, to get either get out of some of your positions or make a little bit of trade. Is that correct? Right. Because when we get there, we will go more into short term cycles and then we time short term how many weeks it goes up. And we uh, we will come with some recommendations of certain stocks that have good cycles and that look good. Yeah. So this is so so they really need to get some research again. I, you know, I don't mean to make an advertisement for you, but no, you, know, you send this to me and it's just it's just been really good. This is a very volatile market. So uh, this is just confirming with your with your work what you're what you're looking at with the overlay. Let me go to the next slide too, because I think that's the that's the QQQs. Right. And, and, and here's the thing that, that I find interesting is that you've got different asset classes all telling you the same thing that we've got some kind of a problem coming here. It's just you can just see it kind of just dropping off, uh, Charles. This is an amazing chart. But you see how interesting it is when this big top in the QQQ was there. The cycle topped and there was nothing going on and nobody had any idea why the market would come down. So the news always comes later. The cycles know it. If you ask me how cycles know it, I really don't have an answer, but I'm happy that it works. Again, so this is again confirming that maybe we've got an opportunity coming after the first of the year to, to put some money to work. But in the meantime, it's just way too risky to do that. Let me right. just go to the next slide here and let's continue on. 
Now, again, here's another complete separate asset. Here's gold. Gold showing the same thing. Now, to me, that's telling me, you know, and, and, and not to not to say something that you're not, but when I start seeing multiple assets that are dropping, that means people are selling uh, asset classes. And that typically means there's some panic or some volatility or some kind of problem in the market where they're raising cash. They're maybe getting margin calls and everything gets sold because gold is a is pretty much a separate asset class. I mean, this is precious metals from from equities, is it not? Yeah, but the interesting thing is you will see when the cycle bottoms, then everybody starts, to buy, starts buying gold and you will have no idea why. And then, you know, the media and the papers will tell you why, but we know that already in advance. So the question is, does it really have to do anything with the news? Probably not. No, but again, it, it's it's just confirming the same time frame. So this is a great timing model for you. Here's, you know, so I don't know if my cursor shows here or not. But we can see right by your dotted line where you, where it yeah. peaked, and and you think that gold may go down if we if it continues breaking down, it could go down to fifteen hundred. That would be a very good entry point, I would think, huh? Well, we have to look at it again. You know, we might we have it now a target of sixteen hundred. If it breaks, we can go to fifteen hundred. By that point, everybody everybody will so be so disgusted from the gold, because as long as we get emails from subscribers, it's a time to buy gold. The panic is not good enough, so it's too early. But it is possible to get lower price target. As long as the cycles are down, it's very simple. You just wait till there's a cycle low, and then uh, then you start buying. Well, you, you know, there is uh, when a lot of the mainstream media, when you talk to financial media, they want you to be invested 100% of the time. And, of course, you don't have to be invested 100% of the time. You just need to be invested at the proper time. And yeah, but, again, that's why, but you have an idea. You have to have the plan. You have to know how to decide. Like we talked about it before, you know, sell high and buy low. But if you don't know what's high and what's low, it doesn't really help you. Well, that, that's correct. Everybody wants to know where bottom is. So uh, we certainly want to make sure that they, that they do that. That's that's absolutely correct. Let me go to my next slide. Let's just take a look at that. Now, again, now we're getting into my asset class. Thank you so very, very much for bringing this in. This is You sent this to me. This is for the Netherlands. Right. Um, this is a pretty ugly chart. Yeah, <laughs> Charles, this is not a good chart at all. No, <laughs> oh, it doesn't look good. So what what are we looking at here? What 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 would you say is is going on here? Well, what's going on here is interesting. That uh, uh, up to the top of twenty two was only a bounce. You see, we had the same crisis uh, before. And then uh, it came back, but it's only a bounce in the bear market, actually. Now, it's a bit overdone because one of the reasons really goes down is because the euro is so bad. So there was a lot of selling in the Netherlands. Uh, but if you look at the next chart, I think it's the next chart that is the uh, the world index. Yep, there it is. Real uh -huh. estate. Uh, that also doesn't look very nice. So... Uh I, I guess the question again for everyone that's looking at this is where's bottom? So is bottom going to, is still further down from here or are we going to yeah, get yeah. to a possible it's, buying opportunity? Well, we have, like also this could have a little bounce uh, based on rumors. You could see a rumor the Fed is not going to do more, but we know they do more or the war is over or anything could lead to a bounce, but it's only going to be a bounce and we should go much lower. Also, uh, you know, we discussed the uh, Toll Brothers and uh, Lenar. The, the the down move stopped exactly at the price target, so we're hanging around, but it's not over yet. Okay, well, I, and, I, I, and, I've and got a couple if, questions. If, if, if interest, I just saw that interest rates at the beginning of the year in the United States were 3%, now they're over 7%. If the 10%, let's say you want to buy a house for a million dollars, you need a mortgage, you pick 10%. I don't think people are going to do that. So uh, who doesn't have cash, and a lot of cash is being destructed over here, is not going to buy real estate. Well, sure. And of course, we've got a U.S. dollar that's really strong. We've got an awful lot of uh, foreign capital coming into the United States uh, just trying to earn U.S. dollars. That's a, that's, a, that's a great strategy for them. So maybe it might be accentuating a little bit of Europe, but I think that we're just a little bit uh, behind uh, the rest of the world. Uh, my my as, chart... As, as, still... as you remember, we discussed it a couple of times before and showed the chart that the dollar index reached the upside target of 113, and since then it didn't go higher anymore. So maybe, you know, it's, it's time to sell dollars and that's not good for you as real estate also. 
Well, it's good for us if we have real estate, I think, in, in, the, in the United States, because when the U.S. dollar drops, doesn't inflation then come into the U.S.? Well, yeah, but you don't want that, right? But, but it's a hedge. Wouldn't you say owning real estate would be a hedge against that inflation? Well, it's what you call a hedge against inflation. If inflation is going to be 50% and real estate goes down 40%. So what kind of hedge do you have? Well, we just have we just have the rental that that comes in the rent that that uh, that hedges that. So the the yeah, you're right. The asset itself may may go up and down. We're, we talk about the income that that comes. With yeah, it. you have to rent. Yeah, the rentals would be okay. You know, so so that's that's why. So as as the prices go up around town, um, rent just goes up to at least maintain your purchasing power. Yeah, the asset could certainly go up and down. A absolutely, no question about that. We've seen that that happen. People say nothing happens with real estate. Well, that's just not true. Real estate is an asset class. It, it, it moves around just like everything else. So, yeah. um, and, and according to my charts a little bit, you know, you and I talked about that before. And, and I think you uh, pointed out to me that we have a, my, it looks like the cycle is going to be a little early this year or th this time. And you said to look for a more powerful cycle. I'm wondering if that more powerful cycle might not be the interest rate cycle itself that's, that's rolling over. Yeah, I haven't found that cycle because I don't have enough data. I haven't either. I've looked. I've looked really hard, but it certainly looks like the. We'll, we'll go into. I, I've got the last slide. We'll just talk about that. So on the on the world index, uh, what would you suggest people do? They all need a place to live, uh, Charles. Well, I, that's an emotional thing. I don't know what to say. I, like I said, it's easy for me to say when something is at the top and when it's at the bottom, but if people don't react. And it's somewhere in the middle. There's not much you can do. Yeah, because we have it here. We're, well, we'll talk about that a little bit. Let me just go to my next slide here, and let's just discuss this. Here's the here's your commercial real estate. It's all yes, following it's the same pattern. It looks like a lot of asset classes are following the same pattern. So we have really we really have demand destruction across all asset classes. This is this is a very very difficult time for the economy. A very difficult time for an investor. Yeah. You really so, have to know what you're doing. So is this is this a, a European commercial? Because I know in the United yeah. States we're still this is European. Yes, it's European. So I wonder how we can extrapolate that to, to the US commercial. What do you think? Well, usually things go in tandem, you know, things uh things move uh, a little bit later, a little bit earlier. But here you have a special situation with the uh the virus. A lot of people start working from home and they don't go back to work. So all this commercial real estate is now empty in Europe. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we've been advocating with, with our clients to stay out of the commercial space. We've been strictly very, very conservative into, into residential rental where we get, you know, we're talking with, uh, with families that need places to live, uh, just a much more conservative. We've been staying out of the commercial world. We have seen an awful lot of uh, commercial space that, that when, when the pandemic it opened up and has never been used again because people are still working right. remote. Right. So, um, and I and I think what's happening too is a lot of people, a lot of the retails are, retailers are in trouble. So there might be a lot of retail space that might become available too. Yeah, because what what happens in Holland, the factories and and business that close because they can't pay the net, the gas price, they can't pay like, the electricity price, the loans are too expensive. So we we'll see how bad the recession is going to be. I, I saw that. I thought that was absolutely just insane that they were actually closing down furnaces that. Because they then they couldn't smelt and bring in uh, metal because they didn't have the energy to to, to, to run the smelters. I thought but the, same, was... but the same thing is going to be here. I saw I saw on Bloomberg that I think there was four hundred. I don't even know if it's millions or billions. Anyway, the number was four hundred of the the crude oil reserves, defense reserves they had, and it's down to seventy now. So if this goes down to zero. I'm, I'm very worried about this country. You know that because if our enemies knows that you have zero, you know, crude, uh, you know, it makes you very weak. So I don't know how long this can continue that uh, the government is going to uh, empty the, the crude uh, that we have stored because nothing's going to be left. Well, you know, I, I, I did see a glimmer of, of uh, a light. I've noticed that the, the, uh, the drillers are starting to get optimistic again. They think that they're actually going to be able to get out and start drilling here in the United States and bring more crude to, to marketplace. But you're right. I mean, you keep seeing that our strategic oil reserve keeps dropping a lot and we keep spending money. You know, this, this 10 or 
10 trillion dollars we spent you know we did we didn't build super highways we didn't build ports we didn't bring infrastructure around we just spent the money it was like it was like a, a, a you know young kids get their first credit card out of high school they go out there and just fill that credit card up with nonsense stuff and i think that's what we did so i i agree with you let me go let me go to our next chart charles and let's just talk about that one Let me go to the next chart. Now, this is the one I put in this morning. This is this is my chart. This isn't yours, yep. but it just confirms exactly what we're talking. To. Bloomberg just put this out this morning. I, I picked this up from Zero Hedge, and it's just exactly what you're talking about. Now, is that U.S. housing fell 8.1 percent month over month in September? Eight percent drop. We're down to uh, building uh, under a million homes. It's 892,000 is, is the exact number on an annual basis, 892,000. And you know, we're short here. We're short housing in the United States. We're, we, we need, we're short about 4 million homes. And we just, we have an immigration problem here where people are pouring across our borders and they all need a place to live. So I don't know where they're going to live. We're not building any. If you're a builder, well, they're gonna, you're going to live like, in Europe, they live in tents because there's no, there's no place anymore to keep them. But the fact that the housing fall is was anticipated by the lumber price that collapsed. So if the lumber price collapses, you can just wait a couple of months and then you get this. Well, but you know, this is this is the uh, association of builders. That there's just nobody coming into the into the development. You know, there's there's no there's no buyers coming in. One of the concerns I had was that we didn't have on a cycle. We didn't get that overbuilding, that over exuberance that you normally get in a cycle. But you know what's happening to our builders here, Charles, is that they built all these homes for someone. You know, they they came into their into their uh, open houses and they they ordered new homes. The builders are up building new homes for them. And now, as you've pointed out, interest rates have gone from two and a half and three percent to six percent, and the people that they built these homes for can no longer afford that house. So this may be where we get the oversupply is that the builders just cannot, they build these houses and their buyers can't afford to buy them. And we get this huge supply because no one is coming into the, into the uh, uh, new home subdivisions. The, the, the builders are just scared to death. You know, they, they're, uh, <laughs> this is the same, they've got the same outlook as they had in, in, at the very bottom of COVID. It, it's been a terrible thing, you know, so, you know, I wanted to talk to you with my personal cycle when we when we did the housing cycle. It looks like when you do the calculations, we come up with two peaks. I'm going to I'm guessing that the housing is completing. The cycle seems like it's completing and rolling over, um, and it looks like probably the first peak is in. Would you would you would you agree with me? I don't really understand what you mean by the first peak is in. Well, when I do an 18 year cycle on a on on a uh, the housing. It looks what you know. It looks stylized, just one peak. But when you break it down into the calculations, it looks like there's a peak right before the final peak, and I'm and there's a little bit of pause. You get a little bit of a bounce, and then it rolls over. And it looks like we're into the first peak. At least that's that's what my research is showing to me. It, it seems like it came in early. That maybe this is going to be a, a, a drawn out affair, but it does look like I think the peak is. And I don't know if we're going to get higher higher prices from this until the next cycle comes along. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, well, it follows also the Elliott wave. I don't know if you're familiar with that. If you know the mathematics of Elliott wave, then you can exactly predict and calculate where each wave goes. Well, I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm an amateur when it comes to all this stuff, you know, compared to you. But, no, no, uh, this is not, there's a small book called Elliott wave explained. Why did you, it's like 50 pages. It's really oh, very helpful. Well, I'll have to read that. I'm going to have a little time on my hands to do this. Yeah. Well, I, so let's just recap this, Charles. It looks like we've got some very volatile times. You think that if this follows our very first chart, let me just go back up to that very first chart, all the way back up. If this follows what you saw in 1987 and it mimicking right now, you yeah. think that this, we might be right about here on your chart. So it'd be just days away from maybe a, a problem in the marketplace? Yes. So as a as a as someone on Main Street, we can protect ourselves by getting out of the market. 
we can protect ourselves by maybe buying some puts or some uh, some volatility indexes. But it's going to lead to a much better time for us to get a bounce in the coming in the coming. Still, maybe at the end of this quarter, is that right? Well, if, you're, if you still if you still have some money left, correct. You have to preserve that capital, don't you? Yep. You know, so, uh, all right. Well, that uh, that that's so. It looks like we're going to have the Federal Federal Reserve is going to continue raising interest rates. The economy is going to continue deteriorating. Right. Uh, what do you think of the dollar? We had talked that maybe the dollar would go back up to to one twenty. It's 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 it doesn't seem like it's doing much beyond one thirteen. Went to one fourteen, I think, for a day. Uh, yeah, that you was, I, up, I, I was showed that chart where the price target was on a 13. And I said, that's the price target I have. For the moment, it doesn't go higher. So for the moment, we're stuck with uh, with 113. As long as it doesn't give a good close of 113, it's stuck there. Well, that's pretty good for the United States, but it's pretty tough for the people around the world when you have a really strong dollar like that. that, that, that yeah. That's really, really hard. You can see that what's happening in Europe with the, with the euro. So yeah, is there I, anything else that... Anything I'm else? From, you know, I, I know from Netherlands. Netherlands had seventeen and a half percent inflation last week. Oh, you're you kidding me! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Is that seventeen and a half percent? Seventeen and a half percent. What's the driver on that, uh, Charles? Everything. You know, it's the energy. It's 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 the 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 the. the uh, it's everything. You know, a box of eggs or whatever. It doubled in price. Everything is going through the roof now. They won't strike. So everybody, I'll give you an example. So the, the one of the, 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 the situation won't strike was the train uh, company. And they gave the people a 10% uh, higher uh, salary. One week later, the tickets became 10% higher, <laughs> more expensive. And that, that never goes away. You're not going to get that back. So once you give no. someone a 10% pay increase, they're not going to take it back. And once you start with that, then you, there's a, you know, it's a spiral. So we're into the spiral that just started. And one group after the other will now demand higher higher salaries. And then everything, everything becomes more expensive. And then they want even higher salaries. So this is going to take a long time. Yeah, the Social Security just came out and gave uh, the people on Social Security 8.9% the cost of living adjustment. Oh, that's and nice. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're never going to get that back. No one's ever going to give that back. No, of that's that, nice. that goes back to 1982. I think it's been like 40 years. Uh, the highest, the highest increase. So, uh, well, okay, 17 percent is pretty doggone amazing. We're we're stuck here in in the eights, and everybody's complaining. 17 percent. We've just been. The, our our pe people must be really upset. They're very upset. It's, it's not, I have a friend that uh, has three kids and he paid 370 a month, he told me, for electricity and gas bill. And now it's 950 How can he do that? He says, I can't do it. They have a problem over there. They, they're giving advice how you take one shower a week, how you put the, 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 the heating only on 10, 10 degrees. You know, how not to – they take off the lights on the, on the highways. So there's a lot of a lot of things going on there in order to save something. Well, it's going to be really amazing uh, what's going on. Well, Charles, thank you so very much. Is there anything else that you'd like to bring on while while we have you? No, it's just that always for people who didn't look, they get our research for free for thirty days, and always says you don't have to take it. At least see how professionals approach the market, and then maybe you will not listen to uh, so-called experts that put you on the wrong foot that you always listen to till now. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so very, very much. And, and they can just go to charlesnenner.com. Right. And I think you have a free subscription button on there. They can just just take that. And it's 30 days, I think, is what uh, what yeah. you were offering on that. Uh, I, I get it. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, well, thank you so very, very much. I, we'll, we're going to really, really pay attention to what's going on here in the next. Uh, we're going to know really in the next uh, week. It's going to be some yeah. kind of week, huh? In any week. If it doesn't happen in a week, then probably it's not going to. But as you saw the charts till now, day by day, it follows the same pattern. Truly amazing. Well, this is going to be historic, is what it is. Well, Charles, thank you so very, very much for bringing this. To that. We're, we're going to get this up right away so that people can at least see it and maybe they can take some uh, some actions on themselves. My let's very, let's, very hope, best let's hope it happens because this this interview will be historic. Then, <laughs> historic, yeah, it will be historic. It'll be great. 
Well, we'll get it. We'll get it going right today. So, so November twenty first is the day we want to look for. It's only two days from now. So yeah, it could uh, be plus minus a couple of days, but it will be exact. It will be the twenty first. Wow, Charles, I've seen you do this before on on other uh, broadcasts. You're actually pretty amazing with this. My very very best to you, my friend. Thank, Thank you, you so very much.